Trailing the thief who stole the Elysium box, Luke and Leighton board the Mullen Terry Express. The descendants of the train, which is known as a cruise ship on rails, astounds them. Surrounded by the luxury of the Mullen Terry Express, the pair begins their investigation. Chapter 1! The Legendary Mullentary Express. Yeah, you thought this would be a gentlemanly adventure? Think again! The word diabolical's in the title. Gosh, just look at this place, Professor. It's so posh, I feel like I should be wearing a monocle. Haha, <laughs> quite so, Luke. Every decoration and detail in this room is more decadent than the last. I'd wager the rest of the train is just as grand. How would you like to go exploring for a bit? Will do. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. It's so single weird to say that I'll never get over that. Like, it's just a thing now. It's not a big surprise or a celebration or anything like that anymore. I'm just let's play in Layton games now. I could do that. No problem. Look at that, Luke. Your bag is wide open and your belongings are scattered everywhere. Oops, I guess they are. You should put your things away before we walk around the train. So this is our first example of an optional puzzle. Some of them will be obtainable throughout any point in the game. However, others could actually disappear over time depending on uh, what, where you are in the story. If that ever happens, don't worry, they're not lost for good. You'll be able to access them through different means, but we'll get into that a bit later. This is puzzle number five, Luke's Trunk. Luke's belongings are all over the place and need to be placed in way in this trunk. Use your stylus to move individual objects into the trunk and make sure that none of them overlap. When you think everything has been placed neatly in the trunk, tap submit. Oh god, I'm like the absolute worst when it comes to packing. I was just like, I literally always wait until like 20 minutes before I have to leave for the airport or whatever. And like I just shove everything in there. I don't fold a single piece of clothing and it's absolutely ridiculous. I remember last time I went uh, traveling, I my suitcase was like one pound over to where they wouldn't allow it to be put underneath the plane. So they asked me to take out something that would just be one pound, and I had a Rowlet plush, and I just took it out, and it was good to go, which is really weird. Anyway, hint number one. You could use little items like the harmonica and book to fill in small gaps later, so pack up the big items first. Hint number two. That unwidely frying pan and spatula set go in the lower left corner. Luke's teddy bear belongs in the upper right corner. Why did he bring a frying pan and spatula? I don't know. Hint number three, Luke's book should be placed in the upper left portion of the trunk. By this point, you should be most of the way towards solving the puzzle, so try working the rest of it on your own. The solution, uh, you could not turn the items around, just FYI. Uh, put the teddy bear right there. The telescope goes right there, I guess. Harmonica down here. Uh, okay, so it's sort of on a grid, but sort of not. Okay, just kind of a bit loose, a bit too loose for my liking, but whatever, we'll get through it. Um, got this right here. Uh, spatula and frying pan. And there should be, yeah, one more thing right here. And there you go. Hmm, let's see if this works. Piece of cake. Hooray! No problem for Luke after he's gone through puberty after the first game. Luke should be able to close the back easily now. He's actually going to show it on the uh, main map that he put stuff away. Oh, he did! Whoa, it was a tight squeeze, but everything's finally packed away. A bit of planning will prevent this type of scrambling in the future. You're right, and I do feel better with everything put away. Come on, Professor, let's look around some more. And we get that added to... We get Luke's trunk added to the puzzle index in Layton's trunk. How... Funny, I guess. I'm uh, just gonna tap around somewhere. Oh, another hidden puzzle? Oh, ew, Professor, the sugar is covered with ants. Oh dear, I'll have to remember to get sugar for my tea elsewhere. Curious though, isn't it? How did they get here? Perhaps this puzzle will shed some light on things. Uh, you don't need a puzzle for that, just don't leave food out and you won't get ants. I guess it's kind of weird that they're on a moving train, but I guess they could have gotten on while the train was not moving. Uh, we're skipping ahead a bit. Puzzle number 17, the worker ant. Busy ants work tirelessly carrying food back to their nest. One day, one such ant was returning with food when he bumped into an acquaintance in front of the nest. Whoa there, doofus! Don't you know that you look that you took the longest path possible back to the nest? Think about where you're going, man. I like to imagine Layton like reading this explanation to Luke and like just trying to sound like a tough dude or whatever. 
Knowing that ant, uh, the ant never traveled the same area twice, can you trace the path he walked to get to the nest? Hint number one. When tracing out a path to the nest, leave a few roads untouched as possible. Leave as few roads untouched as possible. Hint number two. Assuming the top of the screen to be the north, from that point labeled start, drag your stylus south and then go west at your first chance. At the next intersection, head north to the top of the map. When you reach a T intersection at the top of the map, head west again. When you hit a wall, take a road leading south. Hint number three. From the last point mentioned in hint two, head east at the first available point, and then take the first road you hit that heads south. If you've gotten this far, the rest should be a breeze. The solution looks a little bit like this. You could start from the beginning or the end, doesn't really matter, but I guess I'll just uh, go as they intend you to do it from the start. Uh, excuse me, not like that. Excuse me, thank you. Go like this. And... If we could go up here, thank you. And we are good. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. More like a piece of tea, because or sugar, I guess. That's right, perhaps all the heavy lifting kept the little ant from thinking about his path home. If only he'd thought about where he was going, he could have saved himself a lot of walking. You've got it, my boy. While I'm no fan of ants and my sugar, you have to admire their craftiness and work ethic. Maybe they're working maybe they're working so hard because even the sugar on the Molentary Express is extra fancy. Haha, -ha, perhaps I must admit it is a compelling motive. I don't know why, but like, if I had to choose to like live in one video game universe, it seems like kind of a weird choice, but I would very much like to live in the Professor Layton universe, especially if like I'm living with Layton. Just because I feel like he would just be a really great influence on me as a person. He's just like so kind and calm and like he never worries too much and uh, just finds the good in everything. So he's, just, he's always one of my favorite video game characters because he's just such a nice guy and like uh, always so inspiring and insightful. But anyway, let's go ahead and explore the train. Getting some Paper Mario vibes just from being in this train. So hopefully we'll have just as great of a time because I love that chapter. Remember Luke. We're here to find the Elysian box, so don't get sidetracked. But puzzles! Uh, I mean, you don't have to tell me twice. Now why don't we start our search by investigating the train? The Professor and Luke decide to explore the Molentary Express. And I guess we're not going to get one of those fancy uh, intro sequences when we're already partway through the game like I thought we were going to. So I guess past me will have had to have done some editing magic, but you probably already know that by now. And we got a character right here we can talk to. I hear the rooms in front of the train are super fancy that the doorknobs are made of gold. But no one's allowed in except for really rich people. So, misters, are you really rich? Because if you are, you can go see the super duper fancy rooms. Super duper fancy rooms, eh? That none of that none but the extremely wealthy can enter. If our young friend is correctly informed, there must be a set of deluxe rooms in the next car. Wow, I'd sure like to see those. I bet they're utterly fantastic. Uh, it sort of looks like the Google logo right here. Where you, just, you see like the G, even though it's just two circles, but like from this distance, the little knob, it looks like it connects right here. It looks like a G. Uh, did we get, no, I did not want to go back into Layton's room. Head back out. If you tap on a character, then you have like the little, uh, oh yeah, that's the new, oh, she does have a puzzle for us. So that was a new thing that was in, not in Curious Village, but it got fixed in Diabolical Box, so at least one of the things I was thinking of actually happens this time around. When you click on a character and they just have, like, the white lines around them pop up, that means they're just going to go ahead and talk to you. They don't have anything uh, to give you. But if the explanation point appears, that is exclusively for telling you that you're about to get a puzzle. So that's good to know, and it helps you uh, remember uh, whether or not you've talked to a person or if they have anything to give you, and you can just move on to the next area. So it's really nice. I'm going to my grandma's. Where are you two going? We're actually out looking for something, dear. Sadly, we don't know where it is. Until we find a clue to point us in the right direction, we'll simply have to continue looking. Ooh, that sounds like lots of work. Here, I'll tell you a puzzle to take your mind off that stuff. Sounds good. We got puzzle number 24, a strip of paper. 
After trying to fold a strip of paper in half, you notice that the front, that one side of the folded strip is in is one inch longer than the other. Determined to get it right, you fold the strip again, only to discover that now the other end of the folded strip is an inch longer than the other. Now that you've made two folds along your strip, figure out what the distance between this, the two folds is when expressed in tenths of an inch. Math! Hooray! My least favorite. Uh, tap input answer on your input screen. So basically, we're going to have the opportunity to just go over here and then write an answer. So that is what we're going to do. But for now, we're just going to look at this for a bit. Hint number one. Think about how much longer one side of the strip was compared to the other one after the first fold. Hint number two. Remember, you're being asked to answer in tenths of an inch. Hint number three. Consider the location of the first fold or your starting point. The second fold must have been positioned one inch away from the location. Does that clear things up for you? The solution, if you're playing the North American version, then your answer will be 10 inch, uh, is 10 tenths of an inch. But if you're playing the UK version, it's measured in millimeters, so you would say 10 millimeters. Either way, just say 10. I'm surprised that uh, counted as zero. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. Oh, it's great to see good old smiling Leighton once again. That's right, the distance between the folds is well, I'm not always gonna read these, don't worry. Sometimes they get a bit funny, but other times just like a lot of singing text. You got it! Well, those hats you're wearing must be thinking caps or something. I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for, misters. Uh, she got anything else for us? No, it does not look like it. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead, uh, tap around a bit more. And it looks like we are good to go. So let's go in this room. Yes, I suppose these accommodations will do. I do hope my darling boy will be pleased. That reminds me, I believe it's dinner time for my sweet baby. I'm off to visit the dining car. Oh boy, I like how they gave just her voice acting just so you would see like how insane her voice is. And yeah, that's something that I very much like that gets integrated in all the future latent games. We had voice acted cutscenes in the first game, but now we have voice acted like dialogue scenes, even though we don't have the animation for it. It still has like a lot of the more important story parts of uh, voice acting, which is really nice. So makes things a bit easier for me and a lot more immersive and cinematic for you as the viewer, which I very much appreciate. And, and the voice acting only gets more and more plentiful as time goes on. So I very much enjoy that. Unfortunately, there's never a fully voice acted Professor Layton game. I kind of wish they got to that point, but sadly never do. Gosh, that lady was just the type I'd expect to see on the Mullentary Express. Talk about rich and fancy. Quite. The train is full of many well-heeled patrons, like the woman we just met. We must watch our deeds and words here. A formal setting demands formal manners, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, Professor. Uh, this is a different car, so there might be new hint coins for us. Oh, we can actually go in this car? It looks very clean, and hey, a puzzle right off the bat. Just look at the craftsmanship on this picture, Luke. I'm almost certain it was hand-blown. Who knew that something as so ordinary could, as a pitcher, could be so fancy? What could be more relaxing than sitting in the suite with a cold beverage and watching the sunset? Ah, and speaking of beverages, or in this case, deadly beverages, have I got a puzzle for you. Let me at it, Professor. Carousels, puzzle number 23, Pitchers and Poison. Yeah, I told you this late in-game was a lot more intense. We got poisonous puzzles! Uh, but in the UK version, it's just called a sour defeat, so a bit less menacing. Had to make it edgy for the North Americans. Two men known for known here for Jesus Christ. Two men known here as one and two are playing a strange game. First, both men put their empty pitchers on the table. Next, a judge brings a pitcher filled with purple poison and places it in either spot A or spot B. The judge then starts shifting the poison from one pitcher to any adjacent pitcher over and over. After moving the liquid 55 times, the owner of the poison-filled pitcher must drink its contents. If you were a judge and secretly wanted one to win, would you place the poison-filled pitcher down in spot A or spot B? It's a multiple choice question, so you could just go ahead and 
uh, pick one of them, get it wrong, and then get go for the next one if you don't mind losing picker rats. But if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, or the more uh, challenging way, this memo thing right here, it allows you to go ahead and draw on it. So if you have to, like, do a bit of notes and, like, do some counting or anything like that, then you should be good to go with that. Hopefully that will be able to be useful to you. But instead, we're going to go ahead and cheat the system. Hint number one, grab a few water glasses and try the puzzle out for yourself. Minus the poison, of course. The principle that determines where the poison is should soon become obvious. Okay, so apparently forget the memo system. Whip out your own stinking pitcher in water and uh, do the puzzle yourself. Okay. Hint number two, if you stopped after 55 pours and... It's, if you stopped after five pours instead of 55, what would be different? Hint number three. Isn't it funny how on every odd-numbered pour, the poison ends up in the middle of the three pitchers? Okay, so I was listening for before. Um, If you listen carefully, the puzzle theme actually did get a little bit of a remix. It stays the same, more or less, at the beginning, but then it gets this extra little beat in it right here, as you could listen to. Sounds really cool, and I can't believe I actually just had a uh, let me stay silent, list, let you listen to the music portion in a Let's Play of mine, because I always like to make fun of those, but whatever. Uh, the solution is B. Just leave it to me. Maiden's Apprentice strikes again. Apparently in the UK version, it's filled with vinegar instead of poison. Nicely done. Lot of text. Holy Jesus. We're out of here. Excellent work. Now let's press on. We mustn't stand around all day. Don't know whose room this is, but we're going to go ahead and take their, uh, I almost said loot coins. Their hint coins, if they have any. Loot box coins. They do not have any coins, as far as I could tell. Like I said, I'm not going for all the hint coins, but if I find them, I will definitely take them. Not like I have much of a choice. Like, you found a hint coin. Do you want to take it? Uh, let's see. Can't go in here. Oh, we got that hint coin, though. Uh, nothing else around here. I was wondering, were, able to, were we able to go backwards instead of forward? Uh, we are, but do I want to do that now? Uh, it seems like we're... Eh, we're already on this pathway, so I guess we'll just keep going forward. Uh, nothing else over here. Just go in this car. And hello, a whole lot of people. Uh, let's see, do we got any other hint coins? Did not mean to go in there. Don't activate- Ah, oh, it's a god darn story. I wanted to talk to all the people. Wow, just look at all this stuff that is to eat. Yes, it seems the Molentary Express is the first class operation, right down to the kitchen. Oh my, passengers in the kitchen. I'm sorry, but we just can't have that. Wearing those dirty clothes of yours is here in here would earn me a health code violation, you know. I'll have you know that there's nothing at all dirty about our clothes, sir. Say what you like, short stack, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm running a kitchen here. Did you stop to think about what could happen if icky outside germs made it in here because of you? I see your point. Terribly sorry for the intrusion and any worry we may have caused you, good sir. Oh, alright, I'm sorry too, sir. Wait, what's that? Hello! Professor, look there! It looks like our friend is the... Our friend, the cook, has been keeping a pet in his kitchen. And to think he was lecturing us about germs. Oh boy, I guess the cat's out of the bag now. Or the hamster, I should say. Believe me, I know it's not okay to keep a pet in the kitchen. But, well, he's my only friend, see? Furry or not, he's the only pet, purse, uh, rodent I've got to talk to here. My, he certainly is generously proportioned, isn't he? You said he's a hamster, yes? That's right, a hamster, the noblest member of the animal kingdom. See, when I first started working here, I needed someone to keep me company, so I bought him. Thing is, I feed him all the table scraps we take back, which makes for a diet that's a bit, um, rich. He's really put on the pounds, and if he doesn't get in shape, it could really be bad for his health. The poor little guy. That's why I want to ask something of you, boy. Would you mind holding on to my friend for a little while? When he's here with me, I can't help but feed him, but those scraps of pastry and pasta add up. 
So you're saying you want us to hold on to him and help him shape up? Sounds like a great idea to me. Um, I mean, what do you think, Professor? Could we please keep him for a little while? Well, I do believe that helping those in need, rodent or not, is the duty of every true gentleman. We'd be happy to take custody of this hamster for the time being. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't that is a real load off my shoulders. I went from, like, British to American to Italian. I don't even know what I'm trying to do here. The hamster minigame has been added to the trunk. On top of all the puzzles we'll be finding, we also have minigames that we could go ahead and do on the side. You can access the hamster minigame by tapping the hamster icon inside the professor's trunk. Oh, and one more thing. Since we won't be seeing each other for a while, please give him this apple, will you? He loves them so. You got a hamster toy. Use the apple to help your hamster get in shape. Oh, I'm gonna miss my little guy. Please take good care of him. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Uh, what's your hamster's name? Yeah, we actually get to name the hamster, which is really cool. I honestly don't have anything uh, creative or original to name him, and these LPs are recorded far in advance, so I can't ask you guys to give a name for him for me. So I'm just going to go with the name that I gave him in my first playthrough. And it is a reference to a very beloved hamster from a very beloved story. His name will be... Sulu. Luke has named his new hamster friend, Sulu. Okay, little guy, from now on, anywhere I go, you'll go too. Squeak! Squeak, squeak! Haha, it appears your special talent with animals has earned you a new friend, Luke. I think so too, Professor. Now, when I get these minigames, I typically like to uh, save them until we get 100% them. Uh, as we could check right now, if we go into the hamster minigame. Use items you picked up to help the sluggish hamster get back into shape. Items at your disposal are shown at the top of the screen. Drag items with stylus to position them on the hamster's playground. The hamster notices any items within three spaces of his position. He won't react to any items four or more spaces away, so really think about where you want to place your items. Tap an item to see the properties it has. Take advantage of the special properties of each item to maximize the hamster's workout. Once you place all the items where you want them, the tap exercise to get your hamster moving. Once the hamster interacts with an item, it disappears from the playground. His, his workout ends when all the items are gone or when he can't find the next item. Each time the hamster walks the number of steps listed in his goal, he'll get a little healthier. If you could get the hamster to his peak physical condition, something neat will happen. So the minigames will net you a reward in the bonuses section at the end of the game, and typically you need to get to the end of the game before you have like all the items required to uh, complete all the hamster sections, all the minigame sections. So I usually like to, I like how he's level 5 is just lump. Um, I like to just save these for whenever I have all the items available to me, and then I could just do it all in one fell swoop. So that's what I'm going to be doing. We're just going to hold off on doing this for now. I just wanted to show you what this looked like for the time being and come up with a name for our little guy that's going to be traveling with us. Now that's taken care of, let's go ahead and examine the kitchen real quick. See if we can find any hint coins lying around. we got one. Typically there's three hint coins in every area. It's not always the case, but uh, if you want to be on the lookout, then uh, you could, you're could. you pretty safe to leave once you find three of them. Instead, we'll just like tap around like, uh, what I'm doing, like, try to look for, like, specific things, or little tiny things, like, on the handle on a door, or uh, a little crate, or the buns, anything like that, that might be able to work. I can't seem to find this third one. Oh, well. Uh, let's talk to this guy, see if he has a puzzle. He does not. I'm gonna miss my little guy. Please take good care of him. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's anything else for us in here, so we can just head out. And now we could go ahead and examine all these guys, or go back out into the kitchen. Uh, let's see, none of them have anything for us right now. I think that waiter is clickable, he just stands out a bit more than everyone else. But really, there's no, uh, hint coins. Professor, why don't we get something to eat? My stomach is grumbling something fierce. Okay. And, god darn it, I don't want to keep going in there. The door is, like, right there, right? So, like, I click on this side, I don't know, whatever, talk to this guy. He's got a puzzle for us. I'm dreadfully sorry, sir, but I'm afraid all the seats in our, in our fine establishment are taken right now. What a pity. Indeed it is, sir. But while you wait for a table, may I interest you in a puzzle? 
Puzzle number seven, dining couples. Uh, in the UK, it's called four couples. Four couples sit elbow to elbow in a crowded dining car. All diners are sitting next to or across from their partners. The jo Joneses, Joneses are sitting by the aisle. The mustachioed Mr. O'Connor sits beside his wife. Mr. Lambert sits across from his wife. Using the information above, can you determine where Mrs. Hadley is sitting? Circle her and touch submit. So we gotta find out. It's like... Is it called Guess Who? Is that what that game is called? I don't know. Uh, hint number one. The mustachio on Mr. O'Connor is B. Seen as how both C and F are men, his wife has to be a A. Hint number two. The Joneses are both sitting by the aisle, which means they must be sitting across from each other. Since you know B is Mr. O'Connor and C and G must be Mr. and Mrs. Jones, right? Is that a G? I don't know. There isn't even oh yeah, we do have a G. Hint number three. So where is Mr. Lambert in all of this? We know that A and B have to be the O'Connors, so people sitting across from them must also be a couple. But they can't be the Lamberts because the Lamberts have to be sitting across from each other. Keep the above in mind and you should have everything you need to identify all four of the couples. The solution is that uh, Mrs. Hadley is person E. Right here. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right! That's exactly right, sirs! They say that nothing wets... That nothing wets the appetite like a hearty puzzle. Oh, and it appears the table has just opened up! Allow me to a moment to tidy it up and I will be happy to escort you to your seats. Great, I'm starving. Oh, good! Our table is finally ready! We'll just be taking our seats, then. Madam, please wait just a moment. You see, these passengers have been here much longer. Nonsense! We'll not hear another word of this! You jake these people before us? We are insulted! I do apologize, madam. It's simply that these gentlemen arrived before you. We will not be kept waiting, do you understand? Not a single second! We know out of our way! Madam! Talk about pushy. Uh, I do apologize, sirs. There's a lovely observation deck on the last car of the train. May I suggest that you spend a few minutes there while we prepare a new table for you? No need to apologize, my good man. Your job is not an easy one. We'll go see the deck and, re -re and return in a bit. Okay, so we don't get to have our meal right now. The Professor and Luke decide to visit the train's observation deck. Okay, we sort of already got that, but thanks for telling me again. The uh, game. She doesn't even have a puzzle for us, how lame. Uh, no need to look at, look so put down. Don't you know what ladies first, ladies always goes first? Ladies of a certain class, like, ah uh, ha ha, uh, me. I'm not sure if class is the word she meant to use there. Uh, not sure what that's a pun of, or whatever. Nothing else for us in this area, it seems so. Oh, there are two doors! Uh, what does this one lead to? Oh, it's even further into the train. Should we keep on going forward? We're already at 30 minutes, my god! So, I gotta, like, gauge these episodes. Like, how long did I have the episodes for the first Professor Light NLP? Did I, like, run into this problem a lot? It's just, I feel like I wanted to see something more, but, like, we just don't have the time to do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a great thing to be doing not while the recording's ongoing. Let's go and check. What are the episode lengths looking like? It was a 23-episode LP. Each one's decently length. None of them go too over the top too often. Uh, instead of going forward, let's just do what the plot wanted me to do. And we'll check out the back and then we'll end the episode off because I think this is going to lead to something special if we go back here right now. I bet the deluxe rooms make our room look uh, like a freight car. Hold it right there, man. Sammy Thunder says entrance to that car is for VIPs only. Capiche? Now I know you'd like to sneak a peek, but the whole car is booked, so that's a no-go. I bet the kind of person who can rent out the whole car must be some kind of super tycoon. 
Indeed. I wonder what it must be like to have that much room to yourself on a train of this caliber. Well, for now, I suppose you'll just have to keep wondering, eh, Professor? Ha 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 ha. So it doesn't even look like we can go there right now, so we're going to have to go somewhere else to reach the observation deck. Or was the observation deck going forward? Maybe the other way is the front of the train, but we're going forward to get to the back? Kind of confusing, so let's go forward again. Oh, we got puzzles that we got to go through if we go to that one. Looks like no one's here right now. Let's check back later. I uh, got any sort of coins for us. Doesn't look like it. This lady most definitely has a puzzle for us. Welcome aboard, sirs. My god, her eyes are creepy. May I interest you in a refreshing beverage or a scrumptious snack? Thank you, but I don't think we need any snacks right now. Of course you don't. And I put on my best smile for nothing. Since we've got this ritzy dining car on board, most people get their chow there. With competition like that, it's hard to sell even a cup of tea. I'm so bored. I've got a while until my shift ends, so help me pass the time with this puzzle, would you? Puzzle number six, Pancake Stacks 1. So this is the first of a series of puzzles I see. Oh, hey, I like that sound effect. Now, here's a tasty puzzle for you. Your task is to take the big stack of pancakes on the left plate and move them to the plate on the far right. In doing so, however, you need to follow these rules. You can move only one pancake at a time, and a pancake can never rest on another pancake smaller than itself. Feel free to shift things around as much as you like and uh, and to use the middle plate in, compare in completing the puzzle. So basically, you just gotta get all these pancakes from one side to another. Hint number one. This puzzle isn't a brain buster, so take a step back for a moment. One way to solve the puzzles like these is just to experiment by moving the pancakes around. I like how the first hint is just try. Hint number two. If you could get the biggest pancake over to the red plate, you're within inches of solving the puzzle. Hint number three. Shift the smallest pancake to the red plate, then place the medium-sized pancake on the middle plate. Next, place the smallest pancake on top of the medium pancake, this will free up the red plate for the biggest pancake. How many times are we going to say pancake? Uh, but what we're going to want to do is put this one right here. And this one right here. This right here. This right here. This right here. This right here. And then this right here. Just leave it to me. I didn't even need to look through the step-by-step -step solution. I just did it on my own. Hooray. Delicious! The solution can be achieved in as few as seven moves. How many moves did you take? The puzzle is actually a variant of the famous Tower of Hanoi puzzle, a brain teaser invented by French mathematician over 100 years ago. Whoa, check out the brain on you, kiddo. So listen, our next stop is in this dinky little two-cow village called Dropstone, right? There's like nothing there. I sure wish we could stop somewhere more exciting for a change. But I guess that's working a job for you. Sometimes you just have it to deal with crippling boredom. Uh, I believe there should be a coin around here somewhere from when I was looking at the guide. But whatever, we can't seem to find it. Even more stinking doors, my god. Uh, can we go into any of these rooms? We can. We can go into this looks rather familiar, possibly. Say, Professor, does that little shack over there seem familiar to you? Indeed. Unless I'm mistaken, this must be the residence of you-know-who. I have a feeling she'll be a big help to us again. Well, I guess they know who it is, but in case you don't know... Well, first I'll play the first Professor Layton game, God darn it. And second, uh, we'll just let the game play as it goes. So we don't have to go ahead and spoil things right now. Uh, can't go in this car, can't go in this one. All that's left is the door right here. My, what a lovely deck. Wow, this is the best. This breeze feels great. Indeed, and the scenery is simply breathtaking. Look, Luke, you can see a lake over there. The sky is so blue, and just look at all those trees flying by. Now that's what I call a view. 
It's quite amazing, Luke. Goodness, all this talk of pristine scenery reminds me of a puzzle I heard once. Won't you try it? Last puzzle of the day, I promise. Puzzle number 11, Trees of the Forest. The forest below contains four different types of trees. Use your stylus to draw dividers in the forest so that you can form four different sections. Each section should contain one of each type of tree, and all the trees must be connected either horizontally or vertically, but not diagonally. When you have your answer, touch submit. Hint number one. You want to separate any two trees of the same type that are adjacent to each other. Why not start by putting some lines down in any place that fits that description? Hint number two. Let's see if we can't find a way to deal with those trees in the lower left part of the picture. The line that you drew after reading hint 1 should give you a little direction to go on. The group of trees you section off down here should take, a, take on a sideways L shape. Hint number 3. The three of the upper left corner and the one to its immediate right belong to different groups. Additionally, the three in the upper right corner are the ones directly below it belong to different groups as well using these hints as stepping stones to solve the rest of the puzzle. The solution should look a little bit like this. Just go around here. Uh, you don't need to go to the corners because it just sort of assumes it for you, which is nice. Go like that. Go like that. And then we got that one already there. Just leave it to me. Maiden's Apprentice strikes again! Very nice. Now take a moment to admire the gorgeous scenery. That's exactly it. Well done. Well, did you expect any less, Professor? Hey, hey. Wow, it feels so nice out here. I almost forgot we are supposed to be searching for the Elysian box. I can't say I blame you, Luke, but that box led the Doctor to his death. Come what may, I will solve this mystery. Of course. I think we finally have a good grasp of this train's layout. I think it's high time we began a proper investigation. Okay, Professor, let's get to it. Sounds good. We got the full we got to explore the entirety of the train, and now it's time to begin the real investigation. Next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we will go ahead and examine the elephant in the room. I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. I gotta leave you in suspense at least a little bit, right? This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Didn't mean for that to rhyme.